All right. Welcome to the Rocket Launcher Podcast, episode 92. I am your host, Supreme King, as always, and join with me is my co-host, and his name is... It's your guy, Obezus. How you doing, man? How's everything Good. going? I'm doing great. You just brought up memories with the game on the screen. With did you not survive? Man? Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to get to that. Uh, shout out to the audience. Anybody out there who's been listening to us, um, thank you so much for listening to us this whole time. Um, please let me know what big plans you have for the summer because we're literally getting ready to start it. Start it where the weather is definitely broke in the, <laughs> for a couple of days because <laughs> I was I was sweating today. Uh, we were sitting here just, you know, uh, chopping it up, talking about wrestling for the past hour. Or actually, wrestling and hip-hop. But <laughs> we're going to talk about gaming. Um, I purposely put this on the screen because I don't think we have as many topics. But we do got the bigger topic, which is the continuation of Stella Blade. Um, but to start it off, I did want you to um, go ahead and give us your impressions and maybe a, a little bit more detail on Digimon Survive. That is what's on the screen. Um, I did buy the game. I didn't play it yet. My understanding is you beat this already. Yes, I did. Okay. And then this is uh, the f- some footage. I think we only, I got like two or three more tracks of your footage to download. And after I'm, I'm saying the b- behind the scenes stuff, I guess, <laughs> but I got like a couple more, but um, I, I saw the Digimon. It was like one of the only ones I didn't get. And I think the rest of the footage was mine. Um, but tell us about this game a little bit. Do you recommend it? Uh, how does it rank compared to some of the other Digimon games that you've played? Um, and just overall, Digimon Survive real quick. This is probably my favorite Digimon game uh, okay. so far. Like, it was amazing. So the only downside, it is a visual novel. Okay. So outside of combat, it's a lot of just reading and hitting next. Uh Okay. You occasionally kind of get to pick certain things to do, but again, even then, you're not moving around physically. It's just like hitting where, like X on where you want to go, and then X to talk, 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 and then you get to battle. If so they you... add like moving around, I think it would be probably the best. So, but what you're saying though, you, it's still for you better than the other Digimon games you've played so far. Yes, because it is the one that felt the most like Digimon. So. I feel like the other games, while they had the spirit of Digimon, it still kind of felt more like a Pokemon sort of thing where you kind of had like eight Digimon, uh, the turn-based battles. As you walk, you run into random encounters or mm-hmm. you have to battle certain people. Like it, did, it still felt more like a Pokemon <laughs> clone uh, just with Digimon characters. Uh, but also one of the big things I always notice, which other people might not like it, it times out like with this now, mm-hmm. uh, the Digivolutions, right? In the other games, right, like Cyber Sleuth and stuff, once they digivolve, they're digivolved. You occasionally right, right, right. can undigivolve and redigivolve and that stuff. For this one, you digivolve in the battle, and then at the end of the battle, they turn back. Okay. Right? So I always have Agumon at the start, and then I have to digivolve him in battle. Now, you can warp digivolve and just skip a few levels instead of going one by one per turn, and you have like a special. Uh, meter and it'll go down a little bit each turn but then there's things to do to increase it uh and it also controls how you do your special attacks so you can run out and it'll turn back into their previous form but uh it just felt more like the show because you had to digivolve in battle and you could choose not to yeah uh it had the rpg like positioning stuff so like you get extra power if you attack something from behind or from the side so you have to position yourself and be aware of how the enemies might position next battle uh, or, like, next attack, things like that. And uh, you have to build up your relationship with, like, your Digimon and your teammates. That's what will allow the Digimon to digivolve and go down certain paths. So yeah. it was a lot of shows. And then the story was really – it felt like its own season of Digimon. And it had that dark tone, yeah. uh, recognizable enemies. A story that was nice to follow. Uh, if you want the true super happy ending, you do have to give it two playthroughs. Okay. Uh, there's like you because you build up like a trust meter with like your allies, and there's one where in order for things to work out, you have to get the trust meter so high, but you can't get it that high in your first playthrough, and then when you play it again, the trust meter carries over. 
Oh, uh, okay. and that's the only way to get it high enough to get the happy ending. Uh, other than that, there's like four separate endings in the game. All right, so there's there's a couple of details that you mentioned that makes me ask you uh, uh, the harder question about this. Um, for a lot of people, so we're gonna ask the uh, easier question after I ask the harder question. Um, because our audience, a lot of our audience are are real people who have their um you know responsibilities and everything so they don't have as much time you know on a daily basis to put towards this i'm actually asking the the easy question first (laughs) but um actually no i'm gonna ask the harder question i'm leading into the easier one but let me ask the harder question first because it's gonna actually go back to the easy one but from some of the details that you mentioned how does this stack to the persona 5 game Oh, Persona 5 is uh, better. Okay, because you, you mentioned if, certain things about like how they, if you position them behind somebody, the visual novel thing, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just, yep. I'm gathering some but of that because, like yeah. Persona 5 had more, uh, like even though there was a visual novel, you still had, yeah. you know, your actions and how you talk, but then you can walk around the city walk to where you need to go right. and all that stuff for free here is just clicking it okay. felt like like you were just kind of clicking next on a computer over and over okay oh uh, where i, I f- would have preferred to walk the areas i figure you bit. you would say persona is better i, I would have thought that anyway but the question that i was leading into before though the easier question i guess um like i said before we got people who got responsibilities on a daily basis i myself and one of them and we know that Persona 5, you can't just turn it on at, at a particular point because you would get stuck in a certain area where the game is kind of going and you can't really stop, right? Uh-huh. For this game, is it the same way or am I able to no. just stop it? And You and can pick... stop wherever you want and pick up. I think mid-battle, it may start you over on the battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I remember there was a time where I was like cl- clicking through the conversation and then went, oh no, like I gotta go. Then I had just started. So I turned it off and when I turned it back on, it pretty much started at the same part of the conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe two lines back. But you can pretty much you can cut this off and on whatever you want. There are certain novel sections that are longer than the other, so it'll be a lot more clicking. But if you just don't have the time for it, you can just cut it off. And okay. it'll pick up where you left off. Because one of the things I would say is like, well, if I'm if if I got a nine to five, right, uh-huh. and I'm on I, I'm in traffic, coming out of my job, but I finally make it home, take care of my situation with kids, maybe take care of some other responsibilities like some errands, and no matter what, I finally get to wind down. And like I I got out of work at five, but somehow after everything else I had to do, it's pushing six forty ish, seven almost. And I know I gotta be back in bed by like ten. Right? Like I'm I'm able to get a solid playthrough somewhere in like the seven fifteen range to like maybe nine forty five range and I could stop it. Right? Yes. That's what I'm hearing. Cause yes, we know I'm like, like Dakota- <laughs> yeah you don't have that window with persona you literally would no. have to wait to the weekend and that's the type of game that's going to last you practically a whole year literally yep. if you in that situation i had that so. exact point which i think i brought up before in a previous one okay. where it hit like 12 30 and i'm like i need to go to bed and right, i was trying right, to finish right. through a persona cutscene, and they ended up talking for another hour <laughs> yeah <laughs> just like, um just clicking and I'm just like, oh my god, I want to go to bed. Like, and I can't cut it off. There was no save for like the longest. Right. Oh, so this one you could just you could save. I finished my first playthrough with Persona 5 Royal. I want to say close, almost two months ago, and I'm technically going through a second playthrough. Even though I kind of stopped for like Bloodborne, I'm gonna pick it back up to go through a second playthrough for the true ending because I kind of know what to do now. Um, but I remember distinctively there was this one particular night where the same kind of scenario where I thought I was going to be able to I, I pick it up at like six or seven 
and they're running through some cutscenes and stuff. There's some battles and really a lot of talking, a lot of clicking, a lot of decision making and stuff. But I was right at a climax part in the game and I don't have to spoil anything. I don't even have to talk about it. It's just, I was at a climax uh-huh. and it got so, I was so enriched in the story that when it was done, it was two thirty in the morning. Yeah, yo. <laughs> it just kind of happened. And then I went to sleep late. It was a very hard morning because of how late it was and everything. And that's something that, you know, the average person can't just do during the week. That's that has to be a weekend thing. And almost it's almost impossible to play a game like that if you have, you know, six, seven day schedule where you're doing something important, yeah. right? But for Digimon, that can somehow fit. Right. And then at yep. the same time, if you got 30 minutes. If you got three hours, you get some stuff done. Yeah. So Digimon survive. I just wanted to talk about it real quick. We could probably move on. Um, it is fully multi-plat for anybody who wanted to know. And this game has been it's, out now for a little bit over a year. Right. It's been yep. probably maybe and two years. I would suggest probably, it probably would look better on a handheld. <laughs> so I played yeah, it. Um, and it was cool at all. Like it worked. It was fine. But it did feel more like a. I want to like lay down and play this. Yeah, that game looks. Just looking at it on my screen, it it screams Steam Deck. It screams, because yes. I'm playing Persona Four Golden technically right now, as my first playthrough um, on the Steam Deck. And when I look at it that way, I don't think I would want to play it on the big screen, the same way I play Persona Five, because Persona Five was more. Like they, the graphics was a little bit more easier on the eye where that one kind of looked like the Vita. Cause it kind of, <laughs> I think it came from the Vita, um, the golden version. So, um, yeah. So shout out to Digimon survive, you know, just kill some time in here. So it don't be exactly 30 minutes. Cause <laughs> I think we're, we're going to have, um, a very short show technically, which is fine. Um, cause we, we've already talked, like, it probably wouldn't have been that sl- slow if we had actually talked about hip hop on air. That would have been funny, yeah, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think also Digimon survive, if it's not $20 and you're not really trying to play it right away, I think people could probably benefit by waiting until black Friday for this yeah. and probably going on Amazon. Cause if I remember correctly, the year it did come out they must have had a lot more inventory than what was needed in stores. Cause that thing dropped to 20 right away. And I think, I think that's what, what I got it for. Um, 20 or 25, but I really think it was 20. Yeah, um, I, got it for 20. I do still think is it is fully multi-plat PC and all the consoles. So, um, oh, you know what, because you brought this up with Bloodborne, I will bring this up. Yeah. Uh, I, it's a PS4 game for me and I played <laughs> it disc in ps5 uh no crash no issues like that so it is optimized for it yeah i think i I forgot to find the website but there's a website that like like gives you the detail on what's been updated and what has it um for ps4 games going to ps5 i think with the digimon survive game we're in good shape because if i'm not mistaken isn't it still bandai namco that's the publisher yes it is yeah and they're they're a oil machine over there with their stuff. Um, so yeah, they're still active. It's just with Bloodborne, I'm going to get to that probably last, but Japan studios was, was, um, disbanded from PlayStation and basically, you know, um, from software had Elden ring PlayStation brought back demon souls basically. So Bloodborne was just kind of just, it was just lost in the past. There's so many people that's calling for like a remake or not a remake, but a remaster a PS five version. But it's like one of the other studios would have to cut and paste a bunch of stuff because it's their regular studio is not there no more. So I don't know how they would do it, but I am, I am playing it right now and I'll talk about it in a second. Um, but yeah, um, that footage is about to go off the screen and we're going to move on to, I forgot what footage it is, but we'll find out in 30 seconds. But uh, let's go on to your other topic. What do you mean by status is free? What you mean so, by that? So, 
If you remember, I was talking about one of the top uh, modders creators for WWE 2K. What's mm-hmm. the status? Or status? He was banned, and the whole community was like free status. And was oh, like, really? okay. And 2K reversed their decision, and they okay. met with status. And part of their complaint, they were like, we had to talk with him because we were mentioning how some of the mods he does messes with us optimizing the game. And I was like, that didn't feel real. But they were trying to say that, like, his mods cause, like, optimization issues that they then have to continue trying to fix, which I feel like that's not true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't feel like, I feel like a person would understand, oh, it's probably because I got modded stuff that this isn't working. But anyways, they decided to let him go. There's some partnership now going on with him. He's allowed to upload certain things and they're reestablishing some of his older uploads i think they might have a set of rules of things he's not allowed to upload Mm. now uh but they it does seem like they're now more working with him as opposed to just banning him or getting mad and he seems okay he said that he met with them it's all good now we talked about some stuff and i should be good I see. I didn't know where you was going with this. I, I'm looking at. I'm like, status is free. I'm like, uh, he trying to tell the chat that he's single. I'm like, oh, he trying. He trying to get up on. I'm like, okay, he's he free, y'all. He free. <laughs> Hit him up. <laughs> he he, he trying to let y'all know his status. I'm like, okay. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but uh, uh, shout out to um. I guess I could talk about this right now because it's on the screen. Um, I accidentally put Bloodborne on here early. I guess. Oh, you know what? I didn't accidentally put it on here. Um, I remember putting Bloodborne a little bit early because I thought that we were going to be a little bit quicker, but I, I forgot I was going to do the Digimon thing. But um, let me just go ahead and uh, make a quick comment on it. Um, this is actually footage from when I first, first, first started on the PS5. The little footage I was able to get before all the crashes and stuff was happening. So that's early on, but the footage that's going to come probably in the next few weeks well there's like two or three footages that i got from ps5 and so let's say four or five weeks out you'll see my actual footage footage going forward um like maybe i might have to like skip ahead because it looked like it i didn't do nothing <laughs> but um oh shoot i really gotta skip ahead okay all right impromptu for everybody but cool we can see you do stuff yeah there. Um, the game. So if anybody was following my story with this, um, let me just make the the record. Let me just make sure I'm clear. I was not criticizing the game for its gameplay at all. I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, it's a Souls game. It should be easier or nothing. My issue was just for some reason, um, it was not as optimized for me on the PS five as it is right now for the PS four, obviously, cause it's a PS four game, but I was having hard crashes to the point where it was shutting the system off completely. And it was kind of scary from some of the details that I was seeing online where they said the thing that I had happened, if it kept happening more times, it was going to be like, like the system was probably just going to fry itself. Basically. And I would need a new system, but, um, basically I did buy the game of the year version, which was a disc based version. I went for the physical game. Um, mainly because the DLC wasn't really on sale when I bought the disc. Funny enough, it went on sale the very next week for $10, but I I probably would have, um, bought everything, um, this way anyway, cause I have a physical copy, right? Um, but I think it was about around a $30 purchase on PSN at the time. The, um, DLC was $20 while the game was 10. So I was like, okay, if I'm going to pay the same thing, I might as well get the physical version. Right. So I got that. I installed it on the PlayStation four, my PS four, um, that I have is the PS four slim model. Right. Okay. Um, I think it's only one terabyte in there. Um, so yeah, I have this, the PS4 slim model, which is a revision model. Um, but the game on there, I haven't had any crashes 
Um, it, occasionally you might have a stutter or, um, like a pop in load in because it just didn't load correctly. Maybe at one point. Um, and then obviously the loading screens are a little bit longer, right? I had that happen, but no hard crashes, no, the floor didn't load in that kind of thing. I didn't have to experience any of that where before like it would be an invisible floor or like a, a whole area that didn't load in and it's just hard crashed and almost bricks the system and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so like I said last week, I think it has something to do with the game not being optimized for the PS five simply because the studio was just not there anymore. And both PlayStation and from software move forward with Elden Ring and Demon Souls um, remaster or remake, right? So um, this particular game is meant to be played on the PS4 and uh, I wouldn't put it anywhere else unless they announce like some sort of revision of it. But when it plays, it plays. It was fun. It, it was like a learning curve where at first I had to like keep going back, you know, cause our, uh, keep going back over a big period of, um, like a big timeline of stuff that you have to do because I died and like the bonfire thing was like so far back, you know, yeah. that you just have to keep going through a bunch of people. Um, which I know for a lot of people who don't like souls games that might turn them off immediately. Right. But if you stuck with it, you get a good game. Um, I think this footage is footage from the PS five version right before I face a boss for the first time, which you're about to see right now. Um, but I didn't beat them in this, in this footage. Um, but it was my first time playing them. I thought I did pretty well, even though it looked like I was cheesing them for a second. But, um, yeah, you'll see more footage later where I actually fight them like with some skill <laughs> uh, a little bit later. But yeah, man, some, some of them games, you just got to watch it on the PlayStation side. Unfortunately, not everything can be played on the PS5 the way we would have thought. Um, it reminds me of how like the Steam Deck has like its playable games and games that got like the Steam Deck verified check mark. Uh -huh. it's like it's not really like it's not advertised like that on the ps4 to ps5 by playstation maybe they don't want bad pr on that it's like kind of up to us to figure out what that is so i would say like if you have a game that is a ps4 game where there is no definitive ps5 version um you might want to google it first um, okay it's because you don't want them kind of crashes were kind of scary crashes it's like yo did my system just break you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, fight this Undertaker dude who's basically an experienced version of you and he really hammered it to you um, in this game a little bit. But yeah, fun game, fun game. A lot more, like I'll have a lot more good things to say about this than probably Stella Blade, which is another topic we're going to get to probably right now. Um, where Stella Blade is like, it seems like everybody wants to um, focus so much on this girl's looks. It don't make no sense. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I guess, yeah, we could we can go ahead and start the topic right now because this is still Souls footage. And technically, that game is Souls like in a way. So I don't have any uh, Stella Blade footage for us. Um, so sorry, people, for anybody who just wants to googly eye this girl that's that much. But yeah, I have seen one. <sighs> One review mm -hmm. of Stellar Blade with somebody flipping around and running through and looking like they're actually playing the game, yeah. talking about how much fun they're having, and was describing it to like PS2 times. Yeah, in the same way people would say Evil West reminiscent was reminiscent of like that fun PS3 hack and slash. They were like, this reminded them of that PS2 RPG like hack and slash is chaos error. Or era, yeah. and they just look like they were just having a bunch of fun, just running through it. And it's mm -hmm. like, why is why can't other people do that? So like, people are getting refunds through PlayStation claiming false advertisement. Yeah, that's the funniest the thing I've chip, heard. Yeah, 
because some of her cleavage is a little covered up. Yeah. And in my head, I'm like, you're not going <laughs> to be able to see it. If you're really playing the game, what they showed, it was like she has like a deep V kind of like hoodie on. Mm -hmm. And in the covered up one, it looks like they put a bra on her. In the shirt, like, but I'm like, if you're playing the game, it's too chaotic. You won't notice. Yeah. Like, why just play the like? Who? Why are y'all out here buying it just for that? Like, I can understand the censorship. I guess you want to fight. It's like I want the game the way the devs intended. Now, yeah, I try think ABB because I live in America. The one outfit that I saw that they did was. Um, I think she like she, her print was shown in the front, right? Like you can like you can almost see like if they if she didn't shave, she would have hair all right there, basically. Yeah. Right. They took that underwear thing and um, I don't know what the proper name of it was. It was almost like a thong, almost in the front. They took it and and like replaced it with like boy shorts, basically. Like, like it was covering up a little bit all the way to the hip area. So you couldn't really see her print no more. And that was like the main picture everybody was using <laughs> to be upset. And, yeah. uh, oh, I just died. Yeah. The holiday rabbit suit. Yeah. It was, um, I, it's a double edged sword there. Cause I, I agree on the censorship part when it came to the gore though. Um, as far as yeah. her being naked is, I didn't necessarily like, she still kind of is, you know, like she's still yeah. like a lot of the outfits. She's still kind of like that. So, um, like, I think you still got the regular skin suit, the one from, um, uh -huh. the demo where a lot of people were scared to show it on their own pages and stuff. Uh -huh. But, um, yeah, <laughs> the part that I don't like, um, is I guess they took a lot of blood out where I guess it was like a gruesome kind of thing where she, like if you attack the monster or the enemy, right? The, the blood from that creature will literally just be all over her body, almost just dripping off her body. Right. She right. would almost be covered in blood. And then they did an update where that was almost completely taken away. I see where, that. I don't like where it was just like hardly any blood whatsoever. It was like where before it was just like pouring out of the other person all on her basically. Uh. And um, I don't like that because um, that reminds me of um, the criticism. Like it actually goes all the way back way past this game, but goes to God of War for me actually from when they did the um, 2018 and then the next one where the blood was there, but it was like not on the level of the PS3 games and the PS2 games, basically like okay. the gore of it. That was, that's so to me is like, well, I would want to see that back. I don't want to see that being like simplified out. Um, it felt like it was simplified out with that game, but it was still, you know, obviously God of War still a great game, the gameplay and everything, but it's just the gruesomeness took a tone back and it seems like the same energy was was here with this game um where i wouldn't have want that like if anything just like how like wrestling games you can go into settings and be like blood no blood i feel like yeah. they should have just the setting let it be the yeah. fan's choice um oddly enough i kind of feel the same way with the the nakedness too like just let it be the fan's choice let them go in there and do it <laughs> yeah it's just right? it's, it's a weird thing that we're having this conversation again because i didn't think this conversation needed to go two weeks but it kind of was like the only relevant topic <laughs> um as weirdly enough it's just game is just really light right now yeah um but for me it, <laughs> i think it just should have been as simple as like here's a setting that you can just go in there and toggle it back and forth on and off for the gore as well as like the outfit. I don't know what they would have said for the outfit, maybe adult attire or regular attire or something where she goes from like Catwoman outfits to like what everybody is like going on and on about, you know? Um, and it would have been the end of it basically. Um, 
but yeah i i think in with a lot of games going forward it's like just put the setting in there you know yeah just put the setting and then that's the end of it um is it a bigger censorship thing that we need to worry about i don't really think so because at the same time i remember um cyberpunk 2077 even though you'd never see your character after uh you do this you can like customize their genitals and all of that and they were just like butt booty naked and even people was on the stream with it like that and in some other games is the same way where it's like you're playing the game but you can like customize their outfit but while you're customizing the outfit you can completely strip them down and they have it in there like they don't have to blur it out like you see like actual genitals and nipples and stuff and stuff. So um, I also think the people should calm down a little bit because these are the same people who sat there and modded uh, Res- Resident Evil 7, not 7, 8. Uh, the chick, the big chick with the uh, Dimitres, her. Yep. And then they went into Resident Evil 3 remake and they made Jill naked. I've seen that yep. play through. That's literally on YouTube. Whereas like obviously Capcom did not want that. They they made the outfit what it was and they exploited the tyrant and had everybody smacking her butt with a fly swatter and had her in the lingerie and with um with you know Jill she was from lingerie to nude depending on what the mod was and so these people maybe status or whoever is licking their chops at the (laughs) idea of Stella Blade going to PC because they're going to do the same thing anyway like so it was like like some of the people and the people who's probably complaining about it they obviously can tab over and go look at whatever they want to look at so I don't know why it's that big of a deal um but yeah, I think in gaming in general, I don't want to see gory violence go away, right? Because there's a big game that's coming out eventually when it's ready called Wolverine. Uh-huh. And if ain't no blood in this Wolverine game, I'm going to have a problem with that. <laughs> no game. I'm, I'm have, it won't even be a Wolverine game, right? It would be like, it would be like you scratching somebody who that's basically, it wouldn't be... <laughs> Like, there's no way you can have a Wolverine game and not just have blood glushing everywhere. Like, you just have right. to. You have to. You cannot clean that up. You can't do a, like, like um, Mortal Kombat, that movie, that terrible Mortal Kombat oh, movie yeah. that came out, in, like, a few years ago, where they oh. tried to make the most PG-13 movie out of a rated R movie that they could. It's uh-huh. like, you can't do that. Like, but it seems like that they're trying to, and it's like that part I can understand because I don't want anybody wasting our time, you know. Overall, if because I want a full Wolverine game, you know what I'm saying? Imagine like if if the actual Mortal Kombat games going forward, they just all of a sudden don't have blood. It's like what are we doing, right? Um, so that part I'm just like, hey, let's let's not go there just simply make an option in the in the you know settings even as ridiculous as it might sound for a game like wolverine or for a game like mortal Kombat, just give the player the option but don't just take it out and censor it right you know that's the one thing but as far as the butt booty naked stuff like like stop because they sat there (laughs) they will mod every i've seen the tomb raider girl and uh-huh. Jill, like I'm like, are we serious? Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like you not go just mod it this first chance you get, or make these like super graphic like drawings and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like the I don't want to go too far into it, but these uh, Sonic fans have gone oh. way left on the internet. No, we don't, we don't need to do, we it's don't not need even Sonic. like Sonic ain't don't look nothing like Eve from Stella Blade, yeah, but they no, went we way left, <laughs> way left. <laughs> so it's like, no, I don't, I don't have no, I cannot excuse anybody because they have that rule 34 thing where yep. nothing is safe, including children's shows cartoons and all of that so it's like no yep. you do need to stop at some point 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, because yeah. these are the same people. It's go way fast to Stellar Blade. These are the same people. So, but yeah, what do you want to say about this? They need to, like, calm down. Like, yeah. again, she's like, you know, is, why are you buying this game? <laughs> like, it just, is, are you buying <laughs> it playing or are you buying it when you should just be watching someone else play it? Like, yeah. it's weird that this is the reason you're going to refund it. Like, that's crazy to me. Uh, now, I get it that, like, again, it's it, the... If you don't fight the little bits of censorship, then censorship will get out of control. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's the same thing where nobody found issues with little bits of DLC, and then now DLC is out of control. Yeah. So I get it, but, like, please pick and choose your It's battles. just, a, like, yeah, it's yeah. in a weird category, it though. Weird one. Yeah. It's in a weird category, because at the same time, like, a big portion of these people are, like, the incels who would not That's even... The issue. They would not even approach a woman that looks half as good in real yep. life. You know what I'm saying? Even if you was at a grocery store, like places where you just got to go. And if the girl was there, you saw her and she was by herself and you were by yourself, you, you still wouldn't even do it. Even if uh, nobody was the like, like see the rejection and stuff, a lot of them would not do it. Like it's, it's those people who's complaining about this. And it's like, those are the ones who probably need to to be around women in real life yeah um i could i could only defend for so long but something like this don't seem like i can defend it it's kind of weird um i it's weird too for me because i'm just like i'm right there with you when it comes to the gore though and it's only yeah. because of all these other games like i just mentioned i'm not even thinking about stellar blade it's like do not screw up wolverine <laughs> do not screw up every future mortal Kombat that's coming out you know what I'm saying? Do not screw up the next God of War in Egypt or whatever. Right? Yeah. Um, or if they do the um, Ghost of Tsushima 2, any game that had like blood in there where it was significant. Like, like yeah, it's it's not too gruesome for the internet. The, the internet is still the same people who have Twitter or X. And it's just like what the worst of the worst is there alive in both categories yeah. too, whether it's gore or the, the, the nudity type stuff is just there. It's there. And it is like at your fingertips and the bulk of these people, that's where they complain, right? They complain on that same platform. Like, how can you be mad oh. when within that same platform, you kind of do get what you want. You get a whole bunch of this other stuff, you know? Um, and yeah, like I said, these are the same people who sat there and and um, basically modded out Resident Evil. So like you've already got your 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 new Jill. Basically, you went through Resident Evil uh, four, not four, three, the remake from the start all the way through with her being butt naked or in a lingerie outfit. So yeah, cool thing. Let's talk about the game for a split second. Um, were you aware that the male companion in the game, that's like, he takes over this robot thing, right? And talks to her through the robot, almost like an alpha five kind of thing. Um, his name is Adam, right? And so they played off of that because her name is Eve. Oh, and so through the game is Adam and okay. Eve. Yeah. Oh. Like that completely overshadowed by all this other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And technically, there's still a story there that I don't even want to talk about. I think you just, if you want to play the game, play the game for the story, not for the for the character like that. No. Um, a, a bulk of these people was not here. Like, if you had switched her around with Abby, this game wouldn't have not made it. Abby from Last of Us 2. <laughs> it just wouldn't have made it. Yeah. Or if she just looked like um, Ellie, basically, it yeah. wouldn't have made it. This game is the, the what gives this game its hype is that girl's looks. Other than that, it would have been a, just another Souls clone, like all the rest of them. You know, That's um, true. it's kind of weird. Um, it is still going to be a game that I'm going to buy eventually. I did play the demo. I think I did show some footage. I'm going to go back in and play the um, boss challenge mode from the demo um, for more footage for the uh, channel. But I think by the time that footage gets here. 
Um, Stellar Blade is not even going to be a topic. It's just going to be footage on the screen, no different than right now, Alan Wake, American Nightmare. Because yeah. <laughs> um, I don't want to have that conversation. Anymore. It's kind of weird to have that conversation. Because like, the people who are talking about, um, they kind of just, they really do need to, to touch grass a little bit. Yes. Because in the same day that they will complain about this, they're going to go tab over and look at you know what. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You're like you're just wired that way if you care that much about this person's body. As a game though, um I still stick to what I said is very average in the middle as far as like a souls like game. If you like flashy combat but you are not a fan of souls like formula where you're a defensive fighter and you got to keep healing and you run out of heals, that's it. Um you could play um Man, I'm mad. It's, it's like a blank in my head right now. Well, I know what the other one is. The other one is Cold Vein. If you do like the flashy stuff and the Souls like stuff, and you still want some fan service looking stuff like how she looked, there are other girls in that game that look like good, or at least they have jiggle physics. I'll put it that way. <laughs> um, but you don't want to pay seventy dollars for Stellar Blade. Um, go get Cold Vein. Cold Vein, you can buy physical for like under $20 brand new or used. I think one of those black Fridays, it literally dropped down to $7 on the dot. Um, I would not be surprised if that happens again, this black Friday, but if it doesn't, it definitely is still going to be under 20, um, for the souls like game. Um, that's what you want. You know, if you don't want to pay the full 70 until this one goes, you know, down in price, um, the other one, it just Scarlet Nexus. Thank God I remember. Oh. If you do not want it to be Souls like, but you still want it to be anime ish and flashy and quick, but you want a slightly more fair experience where it's not too hard, um, Scarlet Nexus is the game that you want to play. Um, it was on Game Pass for the longest. That's another game that I think is also under 20, brand new everywhere, as well as used. Um, that's the one that you want to play. This is like a cross between both cross between both. And you just got this like girl who's like extra hot. Right. Um, I still like when I saw her do when they, when they was doing the whole, like she climbed up the ladder and come down like a stripper. I still thought that was funny. I <laughs> thought it, it just looked funny to me that they did it like that. Almost like in a meme kind of way. I wasn't overly obsessing over that, but there are still more and more people making that clip. It's just like, man. Yeah. But um, do you want to move on from this? Do we got anything yeah. else we want to say about this? No. Nah. All right. Um, we got one more topic from you, and then I think I could just do the Epic Games thing last. Um. Okay. So. Um. What was I gonna say? You don't no, have. Like, you know no, I, I, I'm looking at it, but in my head, I was like, I was going to say, we don't have a VR headset. Nope. But that's not true because you do, or at least you borrowed it, right? I borrowed one, but then I gave it back. <laughs> but you gave it back. All right. Well, that's fine. You gave it back. Um, But this is a VR game with a very, very, very popular person. You know, everybody's heard of him at least once or twice. Yep. Well, tell us about it. What's what's up with this? Yeah, so Suicide Squad killed the Justice League it work out as an Arkham sequel. So now they're just making an Arkham sequel. It's called Batman Arkham Shadow, but it's VR exclusive for the Meta Quest 3. Wow. So it's made by the developers that make uh, the Iron Man VR game uh, at Oculus Studios. But uh, they haven't said yet like who's going to be voicing Batman or like what it's fully about, but that's going to be the new Arkham game. So th all the things keep saying like new Arkham game in years and people won't be happy. <laughs> you think they can get somebody to voice Batman that played him in one of the movies? It don't matter Maybe, which one. Or, or they just got to use the new uh, animated voices, Jensen Ackles. Well, that could work. Or the dude from uh, Supernatural. He, okay. Who did the voice of Red Hood in the older movies. He's now been for the Tomorrow verse. Is what the current movies are called. Okay. Uh, the universe, and he's the voice of Batman now. So they just got to use him. Yeah, that could work. I could see that. Um, 
is this VR like everywhere? Or are we talking strictly PlayStation VR two or it the looks PC like it's VR? Only MetaQuest three. MetaQuest three. Ooh, they giving me a, a reason to actually finally get one one day. Yeah, it's supposed to come um, out later this year. I think we'll get the major trailer during Games Fest. Like everything's saying two different Games Fest. Yeah. Um, oh, it's also- a MetaQuest three exclusive. Ooh, big get for them. Yeah. Big get for them. That's that's good. Um, VR is the only piece of gaming. Actually, oh, that's not true. This one of two pieces of gaming that I don't have. The other one, technically, I'm gonna give them their their props is the play date. Yeah. Because um, I think they're very unique. That I can say they're they're the other thing that I don't have. I don't have a VR headset. And I don't have a, a gaming device that has a crank on it. Oh. Um. Not really in a hurry, hurry to get both um, or either one right now. Um, but the Batman game definitely tips the edge a little bit more because it's Batman. Um, VR is an experience in itself, but, you know, that adds to it a little bit, you know, to have that. Um, yeah. I really don't think I would, unless I just fall in love with VR, I don't think I would be that person who would get a VR 2 headset for PlayStation and the Meta Quest 3. I just think uh, like it's easier to do that with regular systems. I, I feel like with VR it's just way too niche right now. Uh, and I don't think it's enough for me to be like I want to get two headsets. But I will consider getting one eventually, but right now we I'm leading towards um the Meta Quest 3. It wasn't just that cuz I also think Meta Quest had like some cool other features like the whole like multiple screens at one time thing I told you about before within the headset, um, which probably is like a dopamine overkill, but (laughs) yeah. Um, I think, I don't know if there's anything else I want to say about VR. Did you want to add to that real quick? Anything else? I mean, if we can get more games like this, I might go ahead and get a VR headset. It's crazy that this isn't like, one, it isn't going to PlayStation VR, mm-hmm. and two, this isn't Rocksteady. So yeah, um, you know what's interesting though? I think PlayStation was was hinting or or talking about at one point. I don't know if it was official because I think it was something I heard in passing, but they wanted to figure out how to get their VR headset on the PC or compatible with PC. I think I remember seeing that somewhere. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe it was a, a rumor. Somebody in the chat could probably correct me if they listen this far. Um, but yeah, I remember that being a thing. I'll get to it eventually. Up next, I'm still trying to get my mega PC. I got to really pick one out soon because I kind of want to have it before the big June shows that um, are going to start happening, which I probably can make mention of right now because I think... The Xbox one just got announced by Xbox um, on their social medias and stuff where their big summer showcase is going to be, I believe, June 10th. And I really think it's still going to get surrounded by a bunch of June shows um, that same time frame somewhere in that weekend spot, because this used to be called E3. But E3 as a name is no longer a thing. However, when it really comes down to it for the everyday average Joe, it was all on YouTube anyway. And they're a little bit more self-aware and they're saying, well, we're going to just all put our stuff on the YouTube channels anyway. Um, So if I remember correctly, that's that's probably going to include Capcom as a show, Ubisoft as a show, Gearbox as a show. Um, which is the Borderlands franchise and then the woke stuff <laughs> and uh, like what was it dames dames for gaming or dames for something and then yep. black gamers for something which was another one then possibly a Nintendo showcase um, and then there was the PC game show like remember it just kept going then it was yep. future game show. It was, they just kept it. Go- it was so many. And I'm trying to prepare myself this June. Cause I feel like, um, with our schedules and stuff, we're probably going to have to stretch that out over two weeks. But, yep. um, I think after that, 
uh, PlayStation waits until August from what we've seen in the past couple of years for them to have their show. Right. And then there might be something in between or right afterwards. Right. Leading all the way up until like at the end of the year, there's the game awards again, which we haven't really gone back to. Um, Stella Blade, I do not think it's going to be in the game of the year category. <laughs> be hilarious if it was because it will only be because of her looks. Um, yeah. But Helldivers, I think, is definitely in the lead. Um, and Power World, I think, is still second. But okay. I think a lot of people are still probably playing Helldivers, but I think they've they're finally stopped with Power World. Power World wasn't really a multiplayer game like that, though. It had a definitive start and, be, and end, basically, mm-hmm. where Helldivers is just like matches, matches, matches. So... Um, yeah, I don't know what else, what else is coming out this year that would be in that category. I know Xbox has a Hellblade that should be coming out this month. Um, but I don't think that that's up in the same, I don't think that's going to be, um, Hellblade 2, I should say. I don't know if that's going to be a game of the year category. Like, like last year, it seemed like there was so many big ones where this year is like games are coming out. But I don't know if they're as big. They're not going to be as big as last year. They're just going to be coming out. You know, that's my opinion. Yeah. Um, I honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I can't think of anything. Another crab treasure. That's going to be up there. <laughs> um, uh, I'm rooting no, for one that, game. Another crab treasure will be up there. Uh, <laughs> Shout out know. to another crab treasure. Like, if you still want to play Souls like games, but you don't want any of the nudity at all. Uh, and you want it to look slightly more wholesome. Yeah. Uh, that one is up your alley a little bit. Soulsome. Um, <laughs> Soulsome like games. <laughs> right before I do uh, Epic Games, I would want to say there is one game that I am looking forward to. Um, That's going to come out in August. And that is called Black Myth Wukong. Uh, that one okay. will probably be in the top five for me. If not, it's going to be like the biggest disappointment of this year and possibly generation so far if it actually sucks. I I really don't think it does because there's been so many, like, they're not hiding it. You know, so much gameplay footage that they've done. It's like, this is not, it's not like cyberpunk where it's like, oh, we're hiding it, basically. They're, they're confident. So usually, you know, you see some big things with confidence, um... I don't think Wolverine or Blade is coming out this year. Um, I, I think they're no. both um, way ahead. And I don't no. remember, but I don't think Indiana Jones is coming out this year either. No, but um, I will say uh, other games that might make it. Uh, there's two more. Star Wars Outlaws. Okay. Just because it's Star Wars. Now, it may not make it because of the reaction to the main character. Right, right. right? But... I mean, Jedi Survivor made it. That game was broken on release, so yeah, it still might make it. And then Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. Okay, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I do think Hell Divers so far is probably the number one one, just based on popularity. Um, popularity alone. Um, but. Yeah, I guess we can move on. Probably at the end of the show, I think this is going to be a solid hour, probably less than an hour, because the last thing that I got to say is just based on our unofficial sponsor. I talk about this all the time, um, and that's going to be the Epic Games thing. I just like to always highlight free stuff. Everybody likes free stuff. I got a free cupcake at my job this morning. Hey! Everybody likes free stuff. (laughs) Free stuff, you know what I'm saying? So... I came home today and claimed a couple free games and I, I can tell you all about it. One of them is called cat quest two. I believe, um, cat quest three was announced and it should be coming out soon, but cat quest two is hundred percent free under Epic games right now, as of this recording. And also I think it's called orcs or ox must orcs. die. Orcs, orcs must die three. Yeah, I think I messed that up two weeks in a row. Orcs Uh-oh. Must Die 3 um, is the other free game. Um, and I think we said this too. It was like maybe you play the trilogy backwards if you just uh, never played it. Get away with that every now and then. Um, both games are available right now until May 9th. 
Um, and remember, um, you don't need any credit card or debit card information. Just need to create a profile, use any gamer tag you've had before or create something new and just get in there and start claiming games. And if you haven't had a PC, you know, once you get one, everything that you've claimed so far will be there. Um, and you know, you could play this on a regular laptop or a regular PC tower or one of the handhelds like the Steam Deck or ROG Ally, which is what I have, right? Um, next week, May 9th to uh, May 16th, the games that are free is called uh, Circus uh, Electric U and uh, Firestone Free Offer. Um, just like the other okay. games, I don't know too much about them. Well, Cat Quest, I actually do know about. Cat Quest is kind of cool. Um, I but, was this week. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, just like the other games, I don't know much about them, though. Oh, um, I can but, tell you a little bit about Cat Quest. Yeah, Cat Quest, I kind of know. But yeah, go ahead if you it's, want to. Because uh, I played a little bit of the first one. Okay. Basically, it's uh, uh, it's an adventure game uh, with, like, hack and slash, where you kind of go around and fight with your little sword. Yeah. As you travel through the land and uh, try and solve, like, the adventure, like a little nice RPG. Yeah. It's a very cutesy style and, like, it reminds me of the old school Mario or Budokai games where, like, when you're traveling, like, area to area, the map shrinks down, but you're still, like, normal size as you, like, giantly walk from area to area. Yeah. And then you go through and you fight the little stuff. Uh, but Cat Quest 3 is coming out this year, so might be a good time to try out 2 to see if you want 3. Yeah. Um. I think either 1... Or they've done two before. I think one of them was given away before. One was given away before. That's what it was? Okay. Yep. Because I, I have one and two. Uh, yeah. I forgot how I got one because I don't think I bought Maybe I did buy it off of Steam. Uh, but then I also got it from here. So I have one and two. Yeah. So um, I think that's how I got it as well. Um, or through Epic, I should say. But yeah. So those are the free games. And, um, next week, I don't know if they're doing two games a week from here on out, but it looks like between this week and next week, it'll be four games total that they're giving away. So shout out to Epic and shout out to all you Fortnite players that's making this possible. <laughs> um, I got people who, who want to play Fortnite with me that I, um, I don't know how to play. For, well, I won't say I don't I know how to play I as far Fortnite as a shooter, twice. but I'm not well, good the with the building, building thing. Part. Yeah. No, there's modes where they don't do the building part. It's just the shooting Yeah, they part. do have the no building mode, but you know, the Fortnite players is just on a, a whole new level of just like. Yeah. Skill. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's like, yep. they play that bad boy for hours. So. The highest I ever made it, because like, you know, there's 100 people and then it's whatever rank mm. you made. The highest I ever made it was 19. Mm. And it was because I didn't run into somebody until uh, like all those people got eliminated and yeah. then the first person i run into shot me and no. i made it to nice 19th place uh that was the second time i ever played fortnite but yeah shout out to the fortnite people yeah. i will say real quick as a side note i got annoyed i was listening to the radio earlier and apparently taylor swift got a new song called fortnite with post malone oh boy and on two separate radio Cash things, fortnite, so fortnite means two weeks right mm-hmm and both radios and one of them was like, uh, my little brother, the, is, this is his favorite song for the new Taylor Swift album because it's called Fortnite. And then mm -hmm. on the other radio station, it was like, hey, guys, this one's not about the video games. So sorry to the uh, young ones out there, but it's called Fortnite. It's like, why did they like, or like, sorry to the little boys out there. But it's like every single radio station keeps making a joke about la, like little boys playing Fortnite and getting confused. That is the Taylor Swift song. And it's just like, is this everyone's joke? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Uh, shout out to um, Crash. It's about time. Crash 4, it's about time. That's on the screen. Right before our closeout, it came up. I'm probably going to use this footage next week uh, so everybody can see the full thing if they want to see it. Cool game. Cool game. Um, harder than it needs to be, but <laughs> cool game. Um, yeah, man, I think that's the show. Nice and sweet. Just cool. above an hour. It was like 59 minutes, but 
it's gonna be an hour once i close it out but yeah cool show we're getting close and close to that big june thing <laughs> i'm almost hyping it up because like um before we were kind of like caught off guard i think i think it was the first year we did this um we were kind of caught off guard by just it was to the point where it's like three or four shows a day yeah. Each one was over 40 minutes. And then like the PC show is like legit two and a half hours in itself, almost like a wrestling show. And yeah. it's full of skits, full of the whole like 30 minute waits and stuff. And so um, that's going to be a challenge in itself, but hopefully we can get through it and we'll probably go a little bit quicker some way. But I remember before I always got through it from watching three screens at the same time. <laughs> um, I might end up still doing that. But I do look forward to big, big announcements from um, Xbox's show for sure. But I think this might be the show that Nintendo, when they do their show, that they might reveal their plans for their next gen system. Because they haven't done anything in April. I think before I was saying they were going to do something in April. Um, April is coming on. So I was wrong, right? Or maybe plans changed or something, but yeah. the like all eyes are on gaming for like at least a week in June, and I think that might be where we might hear about the Switch Two officially, because there's been so many stuff, so much rumors and stuff that people have been saying for so long about like I've heard people say the Joy Cons are going to be magnetic. I've heard people say the obvious one that we all think that when it's docked is 4k and when it's not docked is 1080p, which I think that's more obvious at this point, yeah. it would be stupid not to do that. <laughs> um, and so much other stuff. I, I just feel like maybe during that show, um, if they still have it, I'm pretty sure they will. Um, they might make a mention of that because other than that, I don't think there's anything else big for them to talk about. If they don't talk about the next system and then possibly, the next Mario Kart or next Mario, right? Because, yeah, the Tears of the Kingdom came out. It's already out, right? Um, and some of their remakes and stuff hadn't done so good, or yeah. <laughs> now Super Mario Wonder did, but I don't think uh, our, the RPG one didn't do as good as Super Mario Wonder, basically. But yeah, but yeah, that's the end of the show. Um, we are about a month and a week away from a thousand game shows at one time. Um, I, I just wonder what, what are some going to be some of the bigger surprises, but yeah, that's the end of it. Like comment, share, subscribe. We will catch you next week. Um, look out for some more videos of me. I'm, I'm serious this time. I say it all the time, but I'm serious this time. I have some time. To do that, my co-host and I are not going to play games for like a week or two. So I'm going to have some time to do that. And then also order some Chinese food or something. I don't know. But I'll catch y'all next week. Uh, any last words? Keanu Reeves is the voice of Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, just found that out. Yes. Broke it out of loop. So, yeah, I'll be excited for that. <laughs> yeah, that'll be cool. That'll be cool. I guess he's like um, adding that on to his like retirement tour or whatever. It's like, yeah. let's just throw something new in here outside of all the other stuff. But, hey, uh, why not? <laughs> yeah. But all right, y'all. I will catch y'all next week. Peace.